Hey everyone, I'm Num, and I'm going to show you an update to the this thing that I posted back in January, a sneak peek to the 3D procedurally generated dungeon game concept. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know that I'm releasing the code for this small project I did with the orbiting circles. So if you want that, I put everything in. I put the entire NetBeans project in a zip. And if you don't use NetBeans, you can still get the zip and take the source files. Um, yeah, so that's that. So, back in January, all this thing did, well, it filled in rooms into this map. This is a top down, I'm looking top down, so normally the player would be running around in the white area. That's th Those are the rooms. But I didn't have any hallways generating yet. Um, there's no enemies, there's no real graphics or anything. Um, so there's a lot, it, it's not nearly complete. Now I'm a little bit closer now. Still there's a lot to do, but it looks a lot better. Um, these textures I didn't make myself, I just downloaded them because I'm not selling this. This is just a student project, I, and I actually might give away the code at the end, so that's something to look forward to. Um, so also the sound, the sound effects I, I downloaded. Um, I'm going to start with saying that I have hallways now, and that was like the biggest thing, that was like the biggest reason I took a few months off is because I didn't know how to make hallways. And I think I might actually do a separate video explaining uh, the algorithm for the app generation. So uh, I can explain how I generate this all. It's actually, uh, it's a big two-dimensional array of integers that I manipulate to build a map and then I actually so it's just a it's just a 2d array of integers arranging from like 0 to 3 and that that defines this whole map from from uh basically that's the the index the the uh origin 0 0 of the array and it goes all the way to like 300 300 and empty space counts as like zeros or ones I think and walls count as zeros and like hallways count as twos. So the hallways are basically floors plus ceilings. And then in rare situations, I have threes. Threes are little pillars that will generate in a certain condition. Um, but there's none in this map. So um, I can also show you um, I have enemies that I have. I just had disabled right there. The enemies aren't done. Um, they don't pathfind around walls, so they'll just walk right through walls to, to get to the player. But there's four different types of enemies. These mages uh, shoot fireballs, really ugly fireballs currently. They have medium health, and they drop purple item. And I don't really know what these items are going to be. I mean, I know what they all are, I don't know which one's going to be which. There's mummies. These guys are going to shoot lasers out of their eyes, but they don't yet. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, zombies. These guys are just a heavy hitting, slow moving melee. So, these, these guys have a little bit more health. Um, they're going to give like rocket ammo or something. And finally, these short little fast moving goblins or gremlins or whatever. They, these are, they're just low health, fast moving melee attacks. Now, uh, Heads up display, this is going to be the mini map, and it's going to only render the areas that you've already explored. So you're going to have to explore the areas, all the areas to light, to light up the different, to light up the, the whole map. Um, I don't really know what the point of the game is going to be yet, so I'm going to figure that out, but uh, I'm going to try to make a fun game out of it. So, and also when I have like a, for the map I want to have like a hotkey where you can press and, and and have the map show up on the whole screen. Um, bottom left, that's a health bar. That's pretty obvious. The bottom right is my inventory. These are going to be three different weapons. And then the small squares are ammo counts. So they're going to have numbers to show how much ammo you have. Actually, this you're going to start out with a shotgun. This is going to be infinite ammo. And it's it doesn't it's not uh, programmed yet. All I have programmed is rockets. Um, and these are going to, the third weapon is going to be proximity mines, so you're going to be able to throw these. They're going to stick to walls or the, or the floor, and then blow up when an enemy is nearby. 
There's also going to be one super powerful rare weapon that's going to be like lightning based. So you see this lightning? Uh, this isn't. There's no actual lightning bolts. I just make the sky at the bottom turn white. So it's blue fading into white instead of blue fading into orange for, for about half a second, approximately. It's a little bit. It's like 500 to 700 milliseconds, randomly. Um, the, the the rare weapon's gonna actually have lightning bolts, so you're gonna like shoot a slow slow moving projectile that's gonna like stick to the first enemy it hits, and then like a second later, it's a lightning bolt will will actually come out of the sky and just blow everything up within a small radius. So that'll be fun. Uh, deaths are already pretty fun because of these sweet blood effects. If you didn't already see, here's a closer look. Rocket. Boom. Um, the way I do particles, it's all cubes, just like this. This how the map is made entirely out of rectangular prism shapes. Um, the particle effects are all cubes, just flickering with different colors and rotating and stuff. So, uh, for example, there's a oh, there's a tail behind rockets that's like uh, fire. So they have a tail. Then also, after these explode, and interrupt me. Uh, when they when they explode, there's three different types of particles. There's small white particles, and then there's orange fire particles, and then there's smoke particles. So you can see like the the smoke particles are a little bit larger, and they they kind of rotate and disappear at, uh, slower than the than the rest. Um, and there's like the fast moving white particles, which is like shrapnel, kinda. And then the orange, which is fire. And the way the blood particles work is, uh, it's just a bunch of particles created at different velocities, and then I apply gravity to them, so they kinda like fall down, and they have like an arc, and then as soon as they hit the ground, they stop moving. So yeah. Um, what else? Oh look, here's a pillar. So if, if you have a section of twos, which is the hallway, and then there's an outward like joint here, the corner, then I tell it to stick a stick a pillar in that in that spot. Um uh, what else is there to tell? Let me show you. I've already gone over this, but you can actually change like the size of the map. You can adjust the average room size, the amount of rooms different stuff. So yeah, this is a really big map now. Um, I'll explain briefly how the map generator works, but I'm not going to spend more than a couple minutes on it because that's probably going to be a separate video. So I start out looking at these two numbers, the map width and the map height, and that's going to decide how big my two-dimensional array of integers is. So I create, oh actually, Watch this. I can. This will help with the ex explanation. So if this worked, see. Let me just copy all that. Put it in a text document. So this is the map that we just generated. It starts out as a bunch of zeros. It's going to be hard to see this in the video unless it's a full quality 1080p. But um, it starts out as a bunch of zeros, and then it figures out. Well, it doesn't doesn't do much thinking. It just puts a bunch of random squares, these uh, squares of ones, these are the rooms, and it makes sure that it, uh, it doesn't put any overlapping each other. And then um, after that, it scans around and puts hallways in random places, the twos. So it's connecting all these rooms. And it it, uh, it, it doesn't place a hallway in a room if, if uh, that room is already connected to something else. So using that um, algorithm, it finds every isolated room and makes sure that it's connected to every to the rest of the map. So 99% of the time, there's not any rooms that you can't reach. Um, and then after it adds the hallways, which are like uh, width, they have a thickness of seven. Then you can see some areas. Um, well, it, it's gonna look around and see like right here. There's only this row and this row. So this this was like a thin wall. So after it generates hallways, it's gonna look around for any really thin walls, and it's just gonna uh, take them out and replace them with hallways, which is just uh, 
floor covered with the ceiling, basically. So it's not always hallways. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm standing on ones. Um, these are zeros. These walls, hallways. This is a hallway. This is a this is a bunch of twos. But also these little gaps. See, this was if uh, this was a very thin wall. So these rooms weren't connected. But uh, I I uh, decided that whenever there's like a a wall that's three units wide or less, then I'm just gonna replace all those zeros with twos. So basically, I have a bunch of connected. Um, areas like this um, instead of you know otherwise otherwise there'd be a wall here so that just adds a little bit to the openness of the map and it would be awkward if there was a bunch of thin walls everywhere um, yeah so that's pretty much it I guess I spent about three minutes on that explanation not too bad but I'll, I'll explain that in depth if if people want to see the map generation algorithm all right hope you guys enjoyed and stay tuned for the next update. Bye-bye.